update 2.0 is just around the corner in Cyberpunk 2077 and it's making some massive changes to the progression system including a completely new skill tree for each perk and a brand new skill tree called Relic. Today we're going to break all this down so you can be prepared for the new update. Let's go! Let me know what build you're running in the comments and I'll also link the Cyberpunk 2077 official build planner in the comments as well so you can tinker with it yourself. So firstly, let's talk about the changes overall to the progression system. So nothing has changed with how you level up, you'll gain an attribute point and a perk point, then you can spend those attribute points in any of the five attributes from body, reflexes, technical ability, intelligence, and cool. The perk points can then be distributed into those attribute points skill trees underneath the attribute themselves. So say if you wanna be really good at shotgun, Guns, you would invest in the body attribute and then pick the shotgun related perks. What's different here though is that each attribute now only has one perk tree and it isn't separated between their three skills that they sort of increase, right? Like originally, say for body, using that as an example again, it was athletics for your general like physical body upgrades, annihilation for your shotguns and LMGs, and street baller for your blunt weapons. Now it's just under the one skill tree, but they're still sort of separated in that way. Like you've got the annihilation perks on the left, and then in the center is like athletics and then on the right is like the street brawler and all of the attributes are kind of in this same way but then there's some crossover between them like some of the skills you'll need on like both lines of the trees to like unlock them the main thing to think about when putting attributes into these attribute slots is the different unlock thresholds and they are level 4 9 15 and 20 so in each of these attributes if you want to min max you'll either want to stop leveling that attribute at either level 4 9 15 or 20 or you know continue leveling it to hit that nest threshold because each of those those thresholds will unlock the next tier of perks in that specific attribute. In the attributes as well, there is still a skill progression rewards. These are increased by using that actual skill in the world, and then you'll get like progressive bonuses and rewards by increasing those skills. So the max for those skills are the same as your attributes. Say if your body attribute is 15, then the max for that skill is 15. Now these work a little differently, apparently in update 2.0, I myself haven't actually used it, but I have seen people talk about how these are different. They have been reworked to have different like skill progression rewards and it's a little bit different in terms of its upgrades. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how that works. In all of the skill trees as well, there is now a vehicle perk like specific to that attribute because vehicle combat is now a major part of the game. And if you're planning to play on an existing character, you can respec your perks as you currently can in the game. You know, like at the bottom left, it does cost you eddies. Apparently in Phantom Liberty, you can also respec your attributes, but that's not 100% confirmed. We will have to wait to confirm that. So now what we'll do is go through each of these categories talk about what it does and some key new perks that you should grab generally or for some sort of specific builds. Body determines your raw physical power and fortitude. So progressing this line is for your shotguns, your light machine guns, your blunt weapons, and then also for your overall physical aspects, like increasing your health regen, that sort of a thing. Each point in body will give you plus two to your max health. And for only investing for body, you can get painkiller, which unlocks slow HP regen in combat, plus its secondary perks, which will further increase that overall HP regen, depending on some scenarios that you're actually doing. At body level 9, you can get Wrecking Ball, but the main thing here is the level 2, which allows you to barrel into enemies while sprinting and blocking with a blunt weapon. Now, we saw this in the trailers of this actually being used in combat. Obliterate is also great, so this is a level 3 perk on spontaneous obliteration for shotguns, so the ability to sometimes instantly kill and dismember enemies at low health, which sounds like a ton of fun. The main thing I think that any like general build will pick up in this sort of a line is going to be Adrenaline and rush. So essentially what this does is it's similar to like the adrenaline rush that's already in the game, except adrenaline will give you various buffs and it is triggered by using a blood pump cyberware and health items that will then trigger those effects. So, so you can add something like unstoppable. So when adrenaline rush is active, gain immunity to movement penalties and non-damaging status effects, or just overall movement speed and damage with juggernaut or calm mind so that it lasts longer. And then if you completely max out your body, you could get something like pain to gain. So when adrenaline and rush is active plus 20% item recharge after neutralizing an enemy. So there's plenty of really interesting perks in this line if you wanted to focus on those abilities. And the one thing that I will also mention that was shown in the trailers too is Quake. So at level three for Quake, you can then gain the ability to do that like AOE ground pound on the ground. Reflexes determines your maneuverability and ability to evade enemy attacks. Now progressing through this tree will give you a 0.5 crit chance for every attribute point and it'll also increase your overall effectiveness 
with the assault rifles, the submachine guns and blades and enable you to do like general fast combat actions like dashes and air dashes and that sort of a thing. So those dashes and air dashes are definitely important. Now you can get dash at nine for the threshold and then air dash at 15 and air dash will allow you to dash during the air, but you will need to level three that whereas air dash, you only need level two and that'll just allow you to dash by pressing control. Another interesting perk is lead and steel, which will unlock the ability to block incoming projectiles with blades and this will consume stamina. So essentially allowing you to like deflect bullets. And then as you progress through this line, you'll get like the finisher from Blade Runner or Slaughterhouse. So all attacks, counter attacks and deflected bullets apply bleeding, which increases dismemberment chance. Bleeding cannot kill enemies, but does make them more susceptible to finishes. So an insane level of perks there by allowing you to deflect that damage and then also apply bleeding effects. For the more like sharpshooter weapon focused, you've got sharpshooter. So at level three here, each successful shot grants a stack of sharpshooter, which increases your stamina regen. And you can then use this like sharpshooter effect to gain additional benefits based on the secondary perks there or salt in the wound and submachine gun fun. Technical ability is described to increase your technical know-how, but that's kind of doesn't make sense. But essentially the main thing here is explosives, tech weapons, and cyberware are the main things that you need to think about. So while the tree on the left is generally focused on using your explosives in combat, increasing your overall explosive power, what I think is the coolest thing about this tree is licensed to Chrome. So it'll increase your overall cyberware stats plus your armor. And at level three, it unlocks a new cyberware slot for the skeleton. All skeleton cyberware have boosted stats. The second Secondary perk here, Ampitextrous, will unlock a new cyberware slot for your hands. And then you've also got the Built Different, which unlocks another cyberware slot. So if you're looking to really max out your cyberware, you'll need these perks, plus then getting Edge Runner, which is obviously clear where that inspiration comes from is David Martinez. But then that will allow you to push that cyberware capacity even further, like above that threshold in favor of losing some maximum health. And then you can even enter that state of fury. So you do increase damage, have increased critical hit chance and critical hit damage for a period of time time. For the more weapon like tech weapon focus users, you've got Bolt, which is a really interesting stat or skill here, which will at level three unlocks Bolt shots. So you can fire a Bolt and release the trigger for a charge shot right before the fully charged effect and it will deal additional damage and penetrate cover as well as all tech weapons do. And then you can increase it or buff that with chain lightning. So your Bolt effects will actually do electrical damage, releasing an electrical arc that can electrocute nearby enemies. So really cool there for both the tech and the cyberware chain changes for the technical ability tree. It's definitely going to be a tree that I think everyone is going to invest in for those cyberware upgrades for sure. Intelligence determines your net running capabilities and also your smart weapons, but primarily on your net running. Now at every attribute level here, you will gain plus one max RAM. And that RAM is hugely important for basically all the skills in this line. Now, generally speaking, everything here is just focused on the hack. There isn't anything like critical to call out other than the hack queue. So at level two, this unlocks quick hack queues, allowing you to stack hacks, which we did see in the new trailers. So you can like combo hacks together by stacking them then you can further progress this with the different upgrades on its side plus then queue acceleration to make that queue a little bit faster or even then into queue mastery again just like pushing that faster one of the perks i would grab regardless of your build but even just like at intelligence level four is the car hacker so it unlocks vehicle quick hacks allowing you to remotely take control of cars set off alarms and even explode them great for like a stealth build even just great for car combat right being able to just remotely detonate them sounds like a great time and if you are sort of into the the smart weapons line you've got the smart weapons line here on the right which is mostly focused around like being able to let you transfer that target lock comfortably without having to you know if you reload you don't lose that target lock or you switch weapons that sort of a thing and just increasing your overall prowess with the smart weapons cool determines your assassination skills and stealth abilities now for every attribute point here you gain plus 1.25 critical damage so in the cool tree on the right you've got the focused on using say knives and throwable weapons Weapons and increase your critical hit chance or cooldowns with those sort of weapons and as well as adding some sort of poison damage. I would also consider at level four for cool, anyone can grab this grabbing Word Warrior. So it allows you to use the Sand Devastan to slow down time while driving or allows the Kereskov to be activated when aiming
bending and hand breaking simultaneously. Really cool effect, like using the Sam Denver stand in combat to like, you know, be able to do some drifting and stuff. Sounds like a fun time. Also ninjutsu here at level 15 will increase your movement speed and mitigation chance, but at level three, it unlocks the ability to sprint while crouching, which would be great for any sort of a stealth build to focus on there. And then if you're losing, say, pistols, revolvers, precision rifles, or sniper rifles, dead eye is the way to go. So at level three here, this unlocks the dead eye mode, which is active above 85% stamina. And when active, increases your headshot damage and your weak spot damage and has no weapon spread, which is a massive buff. And then you can improve it even further with the perks on the side or going even further with nerves of tungsted steel. So you get guaranteed critical hits and headshots, that sort of a thing. And it's really powerful to go into that line, I think. And I can't wait to experiment with doing some sort of a pistol build with Johnny's pistol as like the dead eye. The new relic skill tree is very, very different to the others. So in this line, you don't actually invest attribute points like you do in the others. You instead have relic points, which it seems to be some sort of a currency like perk points. Exactly how you get these, we don't rightly know at this minute, but you can bet that I'll have a video explaining all of this and all of these different perks once we do have all of that information. Something to point out here is that the major nodes like say jailbreak, emergency cloaking, and vulnerability analytics all cost three relic points. So you've got a maximum of 15 relic points you can spend and investing in those you can see will drop me down to six because they all cost three the secondary perks here only cost one so by investing in emergency cloaking and then sensory protocol you can see i'm down to 11. the one thing i think everyone's going to invest in is jailbreaks so this unlocks new abilities with the arm cyberware the mantis blades the gorilla arms and the projectile launch system and mono wire and essentially you can read what these different abilities do but they are different for each of these abilities so they unlock new effects for them and then the secondary perks are here are specific to each of those cyberware models right so say if you've got spatial mapping or leap attacks with the mantis blades now cripple enemies and increase dismemberment chance or say if you're going something like the gorilla arms the limiter remover so the shockwave from the charge gorilla arm attacks now knock down all enemies within range so you can see what the different effects do there but they are different depending on the actual cyberware you have equipped and then if you've got say like a stealth build you probably go something like the emergency cloaking to improve your optical camo cyberware or you could then if you're using say weapons just like general ranged combat vulnerability analytics so during combat you can now detect vulnerabilities in enemies armor and cyberware hitting vulnerabilities gives a 100% crit chance plus 25% armor penetration weak spot damage bonuses and then you can buff both of these even further with say machine learning for the vulnerability analytics or sensory protocol for the emergency cloaking so you've got different play styles you can sort of go into with the different relic line, but you can seemingly get every single perk here. You've got just enough relic points, but exactly how we get those, we'll have to wait and see. And I suspect it will be hard to invest into the system because they're probably going to be quite expensive. But let me know exactly how you're building out your character in Cyberpunk 2077 2.0. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.